All right, so first order of business here, uh, the shock absorber mounts right in here on the, the front subframe. And they say you may need to drill this out to three quarters of an inch. I clearly did. Mine wasn't big enough, so that section right there has to go through that hole. So I'm gonna deburr that, clean that up a little bit, and then we'll get the shocks mounted. All right, so one of the areas in the uh, instructions talks about this area around where the coil spring goes um, that you may need to do some clearancing here. Um, I did. Uh, the shock, the coil spring will hit on the edges of this a little bit. It's not terrible. I don't know if that was good or bad, so I just decided to just take that stuff out. Um, we don't need these tabs anymore because I'm not going to put coil springs back in there. That one's a little hard to get out. I'm going to keep working on that, but I got all, you can see everywhere else where I took that off. Hey, it looks like a bomb went off in here. I need a lot of different tools for this. Uh, so let me show you where we are. Uh, so we got the lower control arm on, got the shock installed. I haven't tightened up the spanner nut yet. Um, it's just kind of sitting there. Um, I'm, I got to figure all that stuff out lately. later. Uh, so things of note, um, as I said, I had to clearance out the inside of these things for the shock. Um, the other thing too is the lower control arm bushings ship with a half inch bolt bushing and that works for uh, early second gen Camaros, later second gen Camaros, it's in the instructions, uh, requires a 9 16 bolt uh, so you have to press out the, the bushings that are in there and uh, put the bigger ones in. That was pretty easy. I just took a, a socket and tapped it out. There, there's not really any pressure on them or anything. They come out pretty easy. Uh, and then when you get around up here, you are going to need a 9 six, sorry, 7 16 wrench to keep the shock from spinning. And then this nut here is a 7 8 I didn't have a 7 8 but luckily I had a crescent wrench. Um, again, no torque specs on anything, so I just tightened this until basically it doesn't move anymore. Hopefully that's enough. It's got a Delrin bushing, in, bushing here, so you don't want to over tighten it. Um, so I think that's okay where it is. So I'll put the upper control arm on next. And I'm going to do the whole side first before I move on to the other side. I'll just probably do this today. I'll do it for today. All right, so the latest point of confusion on this assembly process. The Ride Tech instructions say to use lithium grease. Um, on the polyurethane bushings. Um, so I started assembling everything with this stuff that I picked up over at O'Reilly's. Um, Lithium-based EP grease. Uh, this does not say anywhere on here whether this is petroleum-based or not. Then as I was reading up more, people were saying you cannot use any kind of petroleum-based grease on polyurethane. Other people disagree in that polyurethane is impervious to just about everything, but whatever. It's all over the place. So I said, ah, crap. So all I had gotten assembled was the bottom control arm bushings, and I had stopped. So I said, okay. So I went online, got myself some full synthetic grease um, for suspension, etc. Uh, let me see here. Complex lithium EP grease. So that should make everyone happy, All right? Full synthetic grease with Molly. And I look, and the first ingredient is petroleum distillates. <laughs> so I just don't know. I really don't. Um, I'm gonna crack this open and see what it looks like on the inside. At least I have no idea. All right, so. The Valvoline, oh God, I can't. the Valvoline, looks like this, um, not quite sure what that smells like. Uh, this lithium grease smells like gear oil, so that's clearly got petroleum in it, I think. Um, like, largely unrefined petroleum. This stuff is not as stinky as that stuff, so... Because this theoretically is what Ride Tech wants. Um, 
I really don't know though. So that's the state of affairs. You'd be surprised if you go to Google and look up polyurethane grease, polyurethane bushing grease or whatever, you will find everything, literally everything. So people will say, you can use whatever the hell you want, whatever grease you have, it's polyurethane, nothing will hurt it. Other people will say, anything other than silicone or Teflon or PTFE or something, forget it. Other people will say lithium in synthetic or non-synthetic, doesn't matter. I mean, everything, basically. And I even called Ride Tech and I said, what do you recommend? And they said, a lithium-based grease. And I said, such as? And the guy's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> It's like, I have some at home. I don't know where, where it is or where I got it. I've had it for so long. Anyway, so I'm kind of at a loss. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and assemble it with this stuff, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, and another thing which would not be an issue for most people but is an issue for me, um, in numerous places throughout the Rytec installation, it will say, use original hardware. Well, I disassembled this thing... I kept most of the old hardware. Some of it was missing, um, but it's old, it's shot, it's rusted, whatever. Um, so I went to put the uppers on and realized the mounting bolts here, you're supposed to use the factory ones, which I I found them, but they were just, they were crap. I didn't want to use them. Um, so I, I kind of stopped at that point and the grease debacle anyway, and uh, ordered myself a new set of control arms, uh, bolts. These comes with upper and lowers. I don't need the lowers. Those came with the kit. It's kind of funny, they give you the lowers, but don't give you the uppers. Um, so these are all nylon, nylocks. Anyway, so we're ready to get back to work on this thing now. All right, so we have the upper control arm mounted here and the next mystery. Uh, they come with bump stops here. And the instructions say, slide the bump stop through the 3 8 inch hole in the lower control arm even though these are the instructions for the upper control arm. There is a hole here, but that is definitely not 3 8 and I can't see how that would do any good. And there is a hole right there in the upper control arm, which would seem to be a likely place for a bump stop. So I'm going to assume that's what they meant and put, put it there. If you look at this picture, that seems to be in a likely place there that that's what they're talking about so I'm just gonna assume that's wrong all right more mistakes the instructions say to put the boot on the ball joint after you install it but it came pre-installed uh, so I was about to take all this thing off and then I just tried and you can actually get it to go through the hole if you kind of pull on the ball joint and stuff the the boot so that's there so we need to bolt that guy down now all right, that guy's done. Ball joints installed. You can see that bump stop we put there. Seems to make sense, uh, I would think. So uh, we're ready for the spindle now. All right, question for you guys here. Uh, there's no washer supplied on these ball joints. Um, I'm assuming you don't need one, and the ball joint is supposed to turn with the spindle. So do you torque this thing down tight, basically, and lock it to the ball joint shaft? Um, or is the spindle supposed to spin freely while the ball joint stays where it is? In other words, this is actually kind of loose here. I don't know. It seems like tightening it down would be the right thing to do, but this thing's really hard to turn if I do that, and that may just be because this ball joint isn't lubed and stuff. I don't know. Anyway. All right, there we go. She is installed. Um, everything looks good here. <clears throat> I don't believe they supplied this lower cotter pin, but luckily I bought myself some cotter pins, so I'm able to put that on there. Everything else is good here, so we're moving on to the other side. All right, we are done. I think that looks pretty tasty. I like it. Stuff all looks really good. Um, I still have to adjust the uh, coil springs are just kind of hand tightened right now. I'm not sure where they're going to go exactly yet. Uh, this stuff's all done. It's pretty snug. I don't know how snug it's supposed to be. You can move it, but not super easily. Um, but those are brand new ball joints and everything, so it's pretty stiff, um, and I still have to lube them. Uh, what else? 
uh, anyway, that, that's it for the, the Ritec stuff on the front. Um, next up is we're going to start the installation of the Willwood brakes. So, I don't know if this video is going to end here or not or start a new video, but whatever, one way or the other. Thanks, everybody.